Hey, everyone. I'm Manal, a 28-year-old marketing executive with a story that'll make your blood boil. Before I dive in, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to hear how I dealt with the most toxic in-laws ever. I'm sitting at my desk, buried in spreadsheets, when my phone buzzes. It's my mom, and I can tell something's wrong. Manal, honey, she says, her voice cracking. Grandpa? He's gone. My world stops. My amazing, loving grandfather. The man who taught me to ride a bike, who always had a joke ready. He's just... gone. I rush home, and Amir, my husband of three years, is there waiting. He holds me as I cry, and we spend the night reminiscing about Grandpa. The next day, we get another shock. Grandpa left me his house, the one I practically grew up in. Remember when we used to play hide-and-seek in the attic? I ask Amir, a bittersweet smile on my face. And how Grandpa would always pretend he couldn't find us? Yeah, and remember the time you fell out of that old oak tree in the backyard? Amir chuckles. Your Grandpa was so worried, but you just got up and climbed right back up. We decide to move in. It feels right, you know? Like we're honoring Grandpa's memory. Plus, it's the perfect place to start our own family. Amir's family seems thrilled, too. His mom, Farida, and sister, Layla, are all smiles when we tell them. Oh, darling, that's wonderful, Farida gushes, hugging me tight. We'll help you make it a real home. Layla chimes in. I've got some great ideas for redecorating. We should go shopping soon. I'm touched by their enthusiasm. But as we start renovating, things get... weird. Farida and Layla are always around always giving their opinions. At first it's nice, but then... Manal, dear, Farida says one day, eyeing the new curtains I've just hung. Don't you think something more traditional would suit the house better? Mom's right, Layla adds. This is a family home. It should reflect all of us. I bite my tongue. Thanks for the input, but Amir and I kind of want to make this place our own, you know? They exchange a look I can't quite read. That's when the tension starts building. Every decision becomes a battle. Paint colors, furniture placement, even which rooms we use for what. Suddenly everyone has an opinion. One night after another exhausting day of renovations and arguments, I confide in Amir. Babe, is it just me or are your mom and sister a little too involved in our house? Amir sighs. They're just excited, Manal. They want to be part of our lives. I get that, but this is our home. We should be making the decisions. Let's just try to keep the peace, okay? Family's important. I nod, but something doesn't sit right. Little do I know this is just the beginning of a nightmare that'll test my marriage, my sanity, and my very right to the home my grandfather left me. But trust me, what comes next? You won't believe how I turn the tables on these toxic in-laws. Something's not right. I can feel it in my gut. Farida and Layla are acting weird, always whispering and ending phone calls when I walk into the room. It's driving me crazy. Amir, have you noticed your mom and sister acting strange lately? I ask one night. He shrugs. Not really. Why? Before I can answer, his phone rings. It's Layla. Hey, what's up? Amir answers. His face falls. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, of course, let me talk to Manal. He hangs up and turns to me. Layla's family is in trouble. They lost their apartment. They need a place to stay. My heart sinks. For how long? Just temporarily, he assures me. But temporarily turns into weeks. Our house is chaos. Layla, her husband, and their two kids are everywhere. And Farida? She's over every day fussing over them. One afternoon, Farida corners me in the kitchen. Manal, dear, we need to talk about Layla's situation. I brace myself. What about it? Well, they're family. We need to help them get back on their feet. I was thinking they could stay here. Indefinitely. I'm floored. This is our home, Farida. Amir and I... She cuts me off. Family comes first, Manal. You're part of this family now. You need to do your part. I'm about to argue when I hear Layla's voice from the living room. She's on the phone, speaking in hushed tones. Curious, I inch closer. Mom's working on Manal, she's saying. 
Once we get rid of her, the house is ours. My blood runs cold. Get rid of me? I rush to find Amir. Your family is trying to take our house, I blurt out. Amir looks at me like I've lost my mind. What are you talking about? I tell him everything. The whispers, the phone calls, what I overheard. He shakes his head. You're being paranoid, Manal. They're our family. They wouldn't do that. But I know what I heard. I start digging, looking for proof. And boy, do I find it. Hidden in Amir's desk drawer, I discover legal documents. They're drafting papers to transfer ownership of the house to Layla and her husband. My name isn't anywhere on them. I'm shaking with anger when Farida calls a family dinner. Everyone's there. Amir, Layla, and her family. Even some extended relatives. Farida stands, tapping her glass for attention. We have an announcement, she says, smiling. Layla and her family will be taking over this house. It's what's best for everyone. The room goes quiet. All eyes turn to me. Manal, Farida continues, her voice sickly sweet. We think it's time for you to find a new home. This arrangement isn't working out. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My own home, the one my grandfather left me and they're kicking me out? Are you kidding me? I explode. This is my house. My grandfather left it to me. Layla pipes up. But we're family, Manal. We need it more. I turn to Amir, desperate for support. But he's just sitting there, silent. Amir? I plead. He looks at me, then at his family. Maybe... Maybe they're right, Manal. Family has to stick together. In that moment, I realize I'm alone. My husband, the man I thought would always have my back, has betrayed me. And his family? They're nothing but vultures. But if they think I'm going down without a fight, they've got another thing coming. This is my home, and I'm not going anywhere. They want a war? They've got one. I can't believe this is happening. After the disaster of a family dinner, I lock myself in the bedroom, tears streaming down my face. How could Amir betray me like this? How could his family be so cruel? Amir knocks on the door. Manal, please, let's talk about this. I open the door, my eyes red and puffy. Talk about what? How your family is trying to steal my house? How you're letting them? He looks uncomfortable. It's not like that. They're just trying to help Layla. By kicking me out of my own home? I snap. Amir tries to reason with his family, but it's pathetic. Farida shuts him down with a guilt trip about family loyalty, and he caves like a house of cards. I need help. I call a lawyer friend, Jake, and explain the situation. Good news, Manal, Jake says after reviewing everything. They can't transfer the house without your consent. It's legally yours. Relief washes over me, but it's short-lived. Farida and Layla amp up their game. Manal, sweetie, Farida coos one day. Are you feeling okay? You seem unstable lately. Maybe all this stress is too much for you. Layla chimes in. Yeah, remember when you thought we were trying to take your house? That was crazy talk. They're trying to make me doubt myself, but I know what I heard, what I saw. Thank goodness for Sarah, my best friend. She's been my rock through all this. Girl, they're gaslighting you, Sarah says over coffee. Don't let them get in your head. Surprisingly, Amir's cousin Nadia reaches out too. Manal, I believe you, she tells me in secret. Farida's pulled stuff like this before. Nadia spills the tea. Turns out Farida's got a history of manipulating family members for her own gain. She pushed Amir's older brother out of the family business, convinced an aunt to change her will in Farida's favor, and even broke up Nadia's engagement because she didn't approve of the guy. It's always for the good of the family, Nadia says, rolling her eyes. But really, it's all about control. That's when I decide. Enough is enough. I'm not going to be another victim of Farida's manipulation. I'm going to fight back. I start gathering evidence. I record conversations when I can, save text messages, and keep a detailed log of everything that happens. Sarah helps me set up hidden cameras in the common areas of the house. Perfectly legal since it's my property. One night, I overhear Farida and Layla in the kitchen. Once we get rid of Manal, we'll sell this place, Farida says. Split the money between us. Layla laughs. 
poor thing thinks we actually care about keeping it in the family. My blood boils, but I force myself to stay quiet. This is exactly the kind of evidence I need. I also start digging into Farida's past. Nadia introduces me to other family members who've been burned by her schemes. Each conversation, each story, is another piece of the puzzle. Amir notices my late nights on the computer, my hushed phone calls. What are you up to? He asks suspiciously. I plaster on a fake smile. Just working on a project, honey. Nothing for you to worry about. Little does he know I'm building a case that's going to blow his family's world apart. They thought they could push me around, take what's mine? They're about to learn a hard lesson. Don't mess with Manal. The evidence is piling up and soon, very soon, I'll be ready to strike. Farida, Layla, even Amir, they have no idea what's coming. This house is mine, and I'm going to make darn sure everyone knows it. The time has come. I've gathered all the evidence and I'm ready to confront Amir. I find him in the living room, scrolling through his phone. We need to talk, I say, my voice steady. Amir looks up, confused. What's going on? I pull out my laptop and start playing the recordings. Farida and Layla's voices fill the room, discussing their plans to sell my house and split the money. Amir's face pales. There's more, I say, showing him the documents I've collected, the testimonies from other family members. I... I had no idea, Amir stammers. Manal, I'm so sorry. I should have believed you. You're right, you should have, I reply coldly. Now you have a choice to make. Either you stand with me against your family's manipulation, or we're done. Amir tries to apologize, promising he'll make things right. But it's too late. The trust is broken. I've already decided, I tell him. I'm choosing myself. With Sarah and Nadia's help, I organize a family meeting. Everyone's there. Aunts, uncles, cousins. I lay out everything. The recordings, the documents, the testimonies. For years, Farida and Layla have been manipulating this family, I announce. And now they tried to steal my home. The room erupts in chaos. Farida tries to defend herself, but the evidence is overwhelming. One by one, family members start sharing their own stories of Farida's manipulations. Uncle Joe stands up. She convinced me to invest my life savings in a bogus company. I lost everything. Cousin Emily chimes in. She spread rumors about my fiancé until I broke off the engagement. The tide turns quickly. Farida and Layla find themselves isolated, their schemes exposed. I waste no time. The next day I file for divorce. Amir doesn't contest it and I keep the house. Two years fly by. I've transformed my grandfather's house into a charming bed and breakfast. Grandpa's Haven, I call it. It's been more successful than I ever imagined. Sarah visits one afternoon, bringing gossip. Guess what? Farida and Layla are broke. Nobody in the family will help them after what they did. I can't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction. Karma's real, folks. Later that week, I get a text from Amir. He wants to meet, to apologize again. I type back a firm no. As I prepare for the BB's housewarming party, I reflect on how far I've come. The house is full of laughter and warmth. Sarah, Nadia, and other true friends mingle with guests. I stand in front of my grandfather's photo, prominently displayed in the entryway. We did it, Grandpa, I whisper. This place is everything you wanted it to be. Sarah comes up beside me. You okay? I smile, really smile for what feels like the first time in years. You know what? I'm better than okay. I'm free. As I look around at the happy faces, at the home I've built for myself, I know I've won. Not just the house, but my life. Farida, Layla, Amir, they're all in the past. This is my story, my triumph, and it's only the beginning. The story has come to an end. Now I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have given Amir a second chance? Or did I make the right call by cutting him out of my life completely? This isn't just about forgiveness. It's about trust, self-respect, and where we draw the line in toxic relationships. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear your take on this.
If you enjoyed this wild ride, don't forget to hit that like button. And hey, if you want to catch more stories like this, subscribe to the channel.